Subtle edits to make a big difference. Okay, this is a personal preference editing video and I'm going to take this image here and take it through to the final realisation of what I want to see from the image. Now you may pick up some things from this, you may not, uh, but everybody edits differently and personally I find it really, really useful watching different videos of people editing because there's perhaps bits you can pick from and you can apply to your own images. So hopefully you'll get something from this and I'll make it again as quick as possible. It's just considerations that I make when I'm editing images. This is an image I shoot quite often. It's simply just because of the undulating hill and the, the tree, the lone tree that's in the background there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way through this edit, which should be really, really quick just to show you the considerations that I make when editing it. Now I've brought this in from Photoshop because it is a panoramic image that I've stitched together. So I've brought this in from Photoshop. So you'll notice the develop panel is just a normal develop panel. It's not the raw editing develop panel. So the first thing I am going to do with this is I'm going to pull back the exposure slightly and then I'm going to push the smart contrast just ever so slightly, not too much with this one because I want to maintain a lot of the detail without going too dark. The highlights I'm going to pull back just slightly, minus four will be fine, and the shadows I'm going to lift, and the reason I'm going to lift the shadows is because I want the focus to be in the tree. Although we are drawn to the light areas, I don't want to be drawn to this, and I could crop that out, but I quite like the fact that the shadow is over that, so I'm going to lift that ever so slightly. And it will, this is a global edit, so it will lift it in the tree as well, giving us more definition in the tree. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the black and the whites, and the reason for this is I'm going to lift the black slightly because I don't like a pure black in an image. So I like to lift them slightly. And if I do that, I should see that refreshing. Yep, that's a bit better. I've now got some detail back in here. The whites, I could pull back or I could push. So what I'm going to do is pull them back, which will help give me structure in the clouds later on. Curves for this image, I'm not actually going to touch with this. Colour, I could go in here and I could change everything. I could change the vibrance, as you know. Again, I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to work with colour individually within this image. Sharpness, I'm going to leave to structure AI. At the moment, I may go back into that. So I'm now going to move down the panel and I'm going to get into structure and I'm just going to push this ever so slightly. Watching the image as I go, like that refresh, yep, because you'll notice when the structure is applied it actually affects not only the structure of the image but the saturation of it as well. So 9 for me at the moment is okay. This is the main part of this edit for me which is colour. Now again, as I said at the beginning, it's a personal preference. Lovely day and it was a lovely warm day, but I am going to change the blues in this slightly. Now I could push the colour cast and remove the colour cast and that's what I have. But that's again, that's a global edit. I want to target individual colours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the HSL tab and I'm going to go in to the saturations. I'm not going to adjust the hues, I'm only going to adjust the saturations. And for me, I'm going to pull back the blues, knowing what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to pull back the blues slightly. Not too much for this. I'm also going to pull back the yellows, because that will affect the greens in here as well. So if I pull back the yellows, you see what happens. There. And if I push them, it goes really, really vibrant. But before I do the yellows and the greens, I'm going to get into the saturation. I'm going to get into the luminance of the blue and work everything around that. So I'm going to get into the blue and I'm going to pull the luminance down. I can pull it back like that and you'll see that I've, because of that it creates more of a contrast in the sky and that's what I'm after with this. I'm going to edit the sky later but that's what I'm after. So I'm going to now jump back into the saturation and I'm going to pull the yellows back slightly. Now I could have simply desaturated this image but again, it's a global edit. I want to target individual areas. I'm going to move the greens quite a bit just to let you see 
what I'm looking at as I'm doing it. So I'm going to pull the greens back just to about minus five. If I show you the before and after, so that's what we started with. That's not bad at the moment and we're actually getting there. So I'm going to get into saturation next and go back into luminance and I'm going to pull the luminance of the yellows back slightly just to see. Now this is the first time I've edited this. So I'm going through the image you're seeing the image as I'm going through it as well and just the considerations that I'm making. Pull back the greens slightly as well. And that for me works really, really nice. So I'm quite happy here. I'm not going to touch anything else within the colour. Next in here is details. Now there is a lot of detail in this. It was shot with a Fuji X-T4 with an 18 to 135 lens and my focus was on the tree. So because of the size of the sensor, a lot of that becomes crushed together. But that's fine because overall it's an image I'm looking for. I'm not taking a photograph of a sharp uh, field. I'm taking a photograph of an image of a composition, so I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to push the small details and just push them. Four actually might be too much. So let's get in here, just look. And if I turn that on and off, slight difference there, that'll do me fine. The medium details, if I really push that, you'll see what happens. Now for me, pushing the medium details as far as that, we don't actually see like that. That's like looking in HD. Uh, I wear contact lenses or glasses, so I definitely don't see like that. However, you may, and you may want to push it as far as that, but I'm not looking for that with this image. I'm looking for that kind of even nice softness throughout the image. Now I'll go in and sharpen it slightly here. And that seems okay for me at the moment. Denoise, I'm okay with this image as it is. Landscape. Now, if I, after pulling back all those colours, if I go in and add gold now, it's going to bring everything that I've just undone back into the image. So I'm not going to use landscape for this. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to get into relight. Because we have a balance of it. We have this white area here with a dark and a dark. Now, I want to bring more effect into this. Although I've lifted the shadows, I want to bring more effect of depth into this. So I'm going to try the real light with the brightness near and take it back the way in the hope that it darkens some of the foreground, but not too much, just to see. So let's just go quite bold with this and let's see what that does. And that's actually okay because now it's created some depth in here for me. We'll just hide that a second. Again, happy with that. Atmosphere I don't have to touch. Sun rays I'm definitely not touching. Dramatic I don't need to do with this. The mood I don't need any watch through this. Toning. For me, no, not for this style of image. Matte. Yes, I could crush my blacks in here even further, but I don't want that. What I want to do now is I want to get into glow. And I want to add a slight autumn effect to this. Now, the thing with the autumn effect is this is a global edit. And when I apply this, if I decide to apply it, it applies it to everything. It applies the autumn effect to the shadows. Now, to, for the autumn effect to work properly and look at its best, it's dealing with light. So you're actually adding an autumn effect to shadows where there is no light. But we'll see how it is. Normally, if I'm adding the autumn effect, I don't do it in Luminar Neo. I'll do it using uh, masks and luminosity masks in Photoshop itself. But let's see how it works in here. So I've got the autumn effect and I've got the autumn effect soft. So let's try the autumn effect. And let's just push the amount. Let's go like that. So you'll notice that in here, on the shadows here, once it refreshes, we have a slight glow. If I turn that off, we don't. Now, I don't want it as much as that within this image. So let me zoom back out. I don't want it as much as that. That's way too much for me. So I'm just going to add this slightly. And I could go in, let's go for about there. 
because I'm going to get back into the sky after adding this, which might seem counterintuitive by creating an Orton effect over an entire image, but I'm going to get back into the sky and I'm going to edit certain areas, which I am hoping will counteract what I'm doing just now. It seems easier to do it this way for me anyway, so I'm going to go... That was way too much. I'm going to go a bit there for the Orton effect, get into the advanced settings. I can push the softness or I can bring the brightness back. And we'll leave the contrast there as well. So I'll close that down. Now, we could go into super contrast. And we could go into the highlights contrast. And if everything going well, I should get a nice contrast within the sky here. So if I just add that in about 17, and then let's balance this. So my main focus is the sky, nothing else. So if I do that and take it to about there, let's see that before, after, subtle enough to be effective. Mid-tones contrast, so let's just add that round about the same, 15. And let's take the balance in there. Again, I'm only looking at the sky for this, so you can guess that I'm going to mask this out. And you can see the difference there already. They've got more depth in the clouds now. So let's go for that. I'll show you the before and after. That's working fine for me. Shadows contrast. It shouldn't really affect the clouds too much, but let's see. Let's go around the same amount, and let's push that. Now, I think... Editing this with the brushes and the masks that we have available here, I think I could get haloing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the shadows contrast and just leave it at that. So I'm quite happy with the masking and what it's done to the sky. So what I'm going to do is I am going to brush this in. And I'm just going to paint it in. I'll take the brush bigger. And I'm just going to paint it in here. And I'm going to let it bleed onto the tree slightly and onto the field there. And the reason for that is I want to avoid as much haloing as possible. So I'm just going to do that and get down there. The more gradual the effect into another area, the less it's noticeable. And let's just see where I've painted. That's us there. And I'm going to take the brush down and paint in here, but I'm not going to take the brush down too much because I don't want a hard line here. And you'll notice that the feather is quite soft. Well, the feather's actually at its maximum here. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to have to take it down a bit further just to paint in there and to paint in there. But because we've got a light area in there, it shouldn't be too noticeable. So that's a super contrast. Next thing, colour harmony. Now, this is the one that I'm not sure if I'm going to use at all. I'm going to get in and open all of these up. Colour contrast. And I'm just going to push that there. Just to see how it works. Now, you can see the difference there already. After all the edits, and we've went in and played around with the colour contrast. If I turn that off, we've got that to that. Now, that's a really nice, vibrant image. For me, I'm going to pull it back slightly. And just in case you're wondering how much different is that from the original. There we go. That's quite a big difference from the original. So for me, I'm going to leave that. I'm not even going to get into split colour or anything else here. I'm just going to use the colour contrast against it, each other. So that's quite a few edits there. Ten in total. One final edit for me is going to be the sky again. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get into structure and I'm going to push the structure here. And again, I'm only watching the clouds, nothing more. It doesn't matter what's happening with everything else, perhaps a tree, but it doesn't matter what's happening with everything else. And if I hide that a second, just to check how much difference we have in that sky, push it a bit further, Yep, happy with that. I'm going to mask this, take a brush, 
and just paint it in. And in this case, again, I'm going to make it bigger. So we've not done too much to this image, but we have changed it quite considerably. Still get the same effect and still get what I wanted out of the image, but it's just small considerations to make or that I make when editing images like this. So let's go for the before and the after, before and after. Hopefully you've got something from that and hopefully it was worthwhile watching the video because it has just small parts to pick up. I didn't want too much of a difference in this image, but I also wanted the image to pop slightly more. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.